Like many people, as a child, I was bold and brave. When I was nine, I started a music band. I got three of my friends, Janet, Paul, and Daniel, we call them the Owl, to join in. I designed a logo for the band, Stars with Lightning. I gave the band the name, The Lightning Stars, and organized rehearsals. I did everything and I was sure we were going to be famous. The band lasted only a few weeks. <laughs> Turns out, none of us could sing, write music, or even play an instrument. I continued to be bold and brave. In high school, I did open water swimming, and I was always the one swimming furthest from the shore. The first time I went skiing, my friend took me to the black diamond slopes, the steepest ones, and I didn't hesitate to ski down them. I listened to David Bowie before he was popular, and I even dyed my hair green. And then I made my boldest and bravest choice of all, to study physics. You see, as a child, I was extremely curious. I used to love going off to the rooftop in my building and observing the night sky. I would wonder how vast was our universe? What were the secrets that nature was waiting for me to discover? But I was born into a community in Mexico City that discouraged women from pursuing a career in physics. My mom at the time told me, oh, no, you don't want to do that. You'll intimidate men and you won't be able to get married, which almost happened. My teacher in high school pulled me aside and he said, you don't understand, physics is for geniuses. You won't be able to do this. A friend even told me, you're too pretty to be a physicist. So after a decade of pushback, I lost my confidence and I said to myself, this is just not going to happen. Physics is not for me. But I had a dream, and I really wanted to pursue it. I enrolled in a BA that was more acceptable to my community in Mexico, philosophy. And I remained connected with physics by reading stories of unrecognized physicists that were rejected by society, but still had success. Eventually, reading stories about physics was not enough. I wanted to do physics. So behind everyone's back, I secretly applied to U.S. universities to be able to be a transfer student and study physics. And I hoped that somehow I would be able to come up with the money to pay for college in the U.S. Something amazing happened. I got into Brandeis University with a full scholarship. But there was a catch. My scholarship was only for two years, and typically, a BA in physics takes four years. But I was brave again. I found a mentor, a graduate student in the Department of Astronomy by the name of Rupesh, who tutored me and mentored me so that I could skip through the first two years of the physics program and cram everything in a summer. That way, I completed my degree in only two years. I did it. My hunger to do physics did not end when I completed my BA. My mom at the time said, OK, you've done enough. You carried out your dream. Now come back and let's get you back on track to live a normal life. But I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my heroes. I knew I had to do a PhD. So my next bold move was to write to the physics professor at Stanford who had just won the Nobel Prize, Steve Chu. I asked him if I could do my PhD with him. After some back and forth, he said yes to little me. I thought I was set. As a graduate student at Stanford, Things were not easy. 
I was now competing with the best, and I had a huge setback. I failed the qualifying exam my first year, despite studying for it for a whole semester every single day. After that, Steve Chu threw me out of his group. And the head of the graduate student committee told me and the other woman who failed that we should better pack our bags and leave the program. Because as he said, physics departments in the US are and will continue to be male dominated. We were shocked. And my internal supply of bravery was getting depleted. But I had the courage to try again, to be brave. And as my new advisor, the Nobel Prize winner, Bob Laughlin, said to me, you're not only a physicist, you're also a warrior. Great scientists know how to fight for the truth. So I prepared like crazy, and I studied for an entire year to take the exam again. This time, I passed. And eventually, I became the first Mexican woman to get a PhD in physics from Stanford. And then, something in me changed. I moved to New York, and for the past 13 years, I've been feeling like my boldness and my bravery were switched off. I've had some accomplishments, but I never again felt that I achieved anything as impressive as when I graduated from Stanford. I've had the privilege to mentor young women who want to pursue careers in STEM. I've hosted a few TV shows for the Discovery Channel, and I'm currently the chief data science at Metis. I married a man I love, and we have an amazing daughter. And as you can see, we're adding to the family in a few weeks. I'm tremendously grateful for all these opportunities. But despite that, and I've been hiding it, I feel like a failure. At this point, you may be thinking what a friend once told me. Debbie, what are you complaining about? You have health, a loving family, a job, so much to be grateful for. Then she went quiet and she gave me a look that said, get over it. I too wondered why I felt that way. And to be honest, I talked to a lot of people about this and realized that this is kind of a zeitgeist of our time. Our accomplishments sometimes don't match our expectations. In my case, I thought I'd be like Tycho Brahe at this point in my life, a Danish astronomer whose keen observations of the sky were key to our understanding of the universe, or a female Albert Einstein. My accomplishments at this point should have been more compelling, more impressive. I should have reached higher levels of fame or wealth, or at least I should have helped more people. On a deeper level, I had an insight. A lot of us go through life without feeling a lot of support. And that's a very hard thing to overcome. And it creates an, an internal feeling of self-doubt that, that follows us despite any outside accomplishment. I've recently realized that I'm not alone. I've talked to a lot of people that share this feeling of failure. You could be in your 20s, you're right out of college, and you have no idea what you want to do next. Or you're mid-career, and you don't know what is or how to reach the next level, or even make a clean break and start something new. Or you're recently retired, and you're not doing all those things that you promised yourself you would be doing. Instead, you're sitting at home watching TV. And on top of that, we tend to compare ourselves constantly to seemingly su successful people out there. And that just makes our lives more complicated, because we're living in quiet despair and shame, because we think those successful people have it all figured out while we are not living the life we were meant to live. I've had an epiphany when talking to someone I trust. 
After confessing my feeling of failure, he said to me, true heroes are not the ones on TV that have superpowers and go out and save the world. True heroes are regular people who deep down feel like a failure and are wounded, but nevertheless get up and fight. And then I realized we've been sold the wrong idea. Success is not the absence of failure. Success is moving forward despite the feelings of failure. I had to move forward, and I had to try to view the heroic acts of my life in the mundane and not in the extraordinary. I still struggle with it every single day, but there are three things that I try to practice that I want to share with you in the hopes that they may be able to help you as well. First, let's redefine success. Let's all realize that success goes hand in hand with insecurities and struggle. They're two sides of the same coin. Two, try to give yourself credit for the things you have achieved, not just contempt for what you have not achieved. It's not easy, but chances are that credit will help build you up so that eventually you, you'll get the boldness to go in the direction you want to go in. And third, instead of being embarrassed about feeling like a failure, talk openly about it. We'll soon realize that we're not alone, that we're all human, and that we're trying our best. This is also quite relevant when encouraging our youth to pursue careers in STEM, because in their structure, science and engineering are full of failures and obstacles. It's not enough to tell young people to be brave and go for it. We need to model for them how to manage our expectations of success and that struggle and success go hand in hand. Only that way will they really enjoy the process of discovery. My wish for you is that you learn to embrace your vulnerabilities because it's through that process that you can become a hero. Thank you very much.